Hi, I'm Pox. You're watching the Two Smart Guys Show, where every week we bring you the latest and greatest in technology and fun little gadgets that we find interesting. Uh, this week we're going to give an update on how to install FreeNAS, version 8.2 beta. So we wanted to get into some of the cool things that it can do, such as plugins. If you're not familiar with FreeNAS, check back a few episodes last October. We covered 8.0. Uh, this one is starting from scratch on how to do a basic um, installation and set up shares and permissions. So uh, we'll give it to Raggable and he'll give us the skinny. Okay, the first thing you need to do is download an ISO, burn it to a CD, pop it into your free NAS box, and hit 1 to install. Pick the hard drive that you want to have it installed to, or actually it's recommended not to use a hard drive but to actually use a USB stick to do your installation too. Make sure in your BIOS that the USB is the first boot device. On this machine we have five hard drives. When it boots back up you should have a static IP. Just browse to that to a web browser and you're all ready to get set up. We've gotten the IP address based on the console and we get our basic information layout right here. So we're gonna change the few basic settings such as you know, time zone, IP address, and the default password. So over here, we're gonna click on the settings tab. And in this one, you can set things such as the protocol to access. You can either go through HTTP or HTTPS. You can specify a different IP address and a different port number if you want. We're just gonna leave those for the default for standard install. Um, but we're going to go ahead and change the time zone to match the closest. Okay. Save that one. And we're going to go ahead and change some network settings. Uh, we can set a host name. We'll leave this at FreeNAS. You can provide a domain, uh, such as twosmartguys.local. Provide a default gateway. And a DNS server entry or two. Or, if you really want to get fancy, you can use Google's. Is it? I got too many E's in there, didn't I? There's four. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And then we need to take our interface out of DHCP by adding an interface. And it's going to be EM0 because we only have one in here. And we'll call this the LAN interface. Assign it. Oops. Oh, static IP. And we'll get 200. Netmask, 255.255.255, or slash 24. We're not going to be using IP version 6. And we're not going to be adding an alias, which is just a, a secondary IP address associated with it. And so after that, we will have to go back into our browser and type in the correct address. The next thing we need to change is the default password for the admin account. So we go through account, expand it out. Yeah, wah, wah, wah. And click on change password. And we'll change this to something secure, like <clears throat> one, two, three, four. Woo, that's secure. Change. There it goes. Okay. And so the, that's the basic, uh, the first couple of things you should take care of before we start to get into provisioning storage and setting up shares. So now that we have that basic set up, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create the ZFS volume inside of FreeNAS. So we're going to go over to storage, expand volumes, and we want to check to make sure that FreeNAS is actually seeing all of our disks. And we can just click on view disks. And as you can see, we've got our five disks right here. And you can always check to make sure that power management is disabled and that they're set to always be on. That way there's no performance issues if you're constantly accessing uh, your shares. Uh, if these are set to you know, spin down, then you know, during times you're not using it and then you want to go use it, it has to spin up and it takes forever. Click on Volume Manager. And that will get us to this pop-up window where we can create a new one. We'll call this uh, two smart guys. We'll select all the disks and we're going to create a ZFS which gives us a couple of different options such as mirror, 
Stripe, RAID Z, and RAID Z2. Uh, we've covered mirror and Stripe setups in our other uh, shows about FreeNAS. So we're not going to go over these again. What's new are the RAID Z and the RAID Z2 types. These are the RAID Z is basically the ZFS implementation of a RAID 5, and a RAID Z2 is a ZFS implementation of RAID 6. Yeah, so the RAID Z or 5, you get a pretty good read, but the right speeds, yeah, not so great. And much the same with RAID 5. And then the RAID Z2 uh, is double parity, so you can be resilient, you mean you're safe from two disk failures. Uh, the caveat there is that you're now writing twice as much parity, and it's almost twice as slow. It's it's meant for high availability, uh, high redundancy. Yeah, not so if meant- you're using this for backups, that's probably the way to go. Yes. Like, this is your main for- backup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but if you're looking for speed, the RAID Z is a good place to start. Yeah, there the, is the, a- the Stripe's probably faster than the RAID Z, and then the RAID Z is kind of like a little bit of both. Right, but I, I don't believe this option is, is this actually creating uh, a ZFS with a mirror, or is it just simply mirror? I believe it's just a mirror, but you okay. can have a ZFS data set on it. Um, yeah, so there there is a way where we can create a RAID 10 using or a Stripe setup. Or I'm sorry, yeah, a RAID 10 using ZFS, but that's in another episode we'll cover later on. We're not going to. All right, so let's make a RAID Z. Yep. Yeah. All right. So we're going to add. This makes good use of our five drives. And like RAID 5, the minimum for RAID Z is three with a recommended of five. And you don't want to have like 10 because then it, it, that, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> they recommend having a gigabyte per RAM per terabyte of storage space. Yes. Yes. So. so. The more you throw at it, the more you better have in the back end for the cache. So after that, we get our vo- our volume right here, where it's been mounted. And you can see there's a couple of buttons now available for our volume, such as we can unmount it, we can scrub it, uh, edit some options for ZFS, and create data sets within this volume. We can create another ZFS volume, set permissions, and... We're not going to worry about these because we're not going to be using those. So the thing to note here is that at this point in time, we can share this as it is, as a simple ZFS volume. However, there may be environments where you're provisioning storage that you want to chunk up into particular quotas and such. And that's where we'd come in and start adding ZFS data sets. However, in the essence of this show of getting up and running in 15 minutes or less. So now we're going to create a basic share for just this volume. Uh, There's two ways you can do it. Uh, You can restrict it by using a password or you can enable guest access. And you can control all of that about who has access to what on this volume by clicking on the change permissions button. Change permissions. And so you can set the default user select owner and the default group and then the permissions for the owner group and then anybody else that doesn't fall in that group. In the instance of guest, FreeNAS uses an account called nobody, so it's going to fall into here. So for guest access, we're just going to enable things across the board. It's our home network. We're not worried about security, so we don't really care in this instance. Then after that, we're going to go ahead and we'll click on the sharing button up here. Click on the Windows SIFS tab, and we're going to add a window share. And we'll call this main stuff. And then we'll browse to the mount point, which in this instance is the name of that volume we created, and we'll allow guest access. And since this is the first time we're setting up a window share, the service is turned off by default, and it will prompt us to turn it off. We want to say yes to that. And so now the SIF service, we have a SIF share, and the SIF service service is running. All right, so we're going to open up our browser, and we could browse the network, but I don't know if this machine is actually in the same work group. 
Probably not. Oh, no, there's free naz. Mm. And there's our s main share, and we can create a text document. Yay! Oh, doesn't, oh it actually took that character. <laughs> there, there are additional settings for each service inside of the services area. So if you go over to services, and then make sure you're, select, you're set to the core tab. Next to each service is a little wrench icon where you can set basic settings for that service. In this instance, we can set things such as the NetBIOS name for the machine. We can set the work group, description, what the guest account is mapped to. And th these are fine by default. If you have your own work group set up on your Windows environment, you can certainly throw it into there so it's visible to the other machines through the network browser. Or you can always just straight up type it into Explorer and map the drive later on. And so that's setting up a anonymous guest share inside or for Windows. Mm -hmm. Next thing we can do is we can we can lock it down. However, if uh, your free NAS box is in a work environment of some sort where multiple people would be using the share and you don't want, say, Raggable getting into Pox's stuff, we can always provision or set permissions. And the first thing to do with that, with that though, is to actually create the users. You can integrate FreeNAS into an Active Directory or LDAP environment. We're not going to go over that. We're just going to create local users. And you expand the accounts tree over here, expand users, and we'll add a user. You can leave the user ID as the default. We'll create a username of POTS. We'll create a group for just POTS. We have to provide a full name. Scroll down. Yes, it is my full name. <laughs> and then the other thing, too, is we can always create groups later on that uh, for common things such as, you know, HR, finance, production team, whatever. Oh, well, secure password. Um, one, two, three, four. You're faster than team viewer. <laughs> <laughs> so now we've got a user. The next thing we need to do is actually update the permissions on the volume, the, ZS, the ZFS volume we created. So we go back over to our storage area volumes, view volumes, which you know, we're already here, but that's how you get there. Permissions button. And now we're going to disable write access. We can still determine if read and execute are available. We're going to say, no, hell no, we've got secure stuff. And we'll say, only Pox has access to this. And we'll change the owner to Pox. Change. Then we'll go back over to the shares and we'll edit the share and disable guest access. Uh, if we go back in and let's add myself, we'll create a primary group of me. Full name is Rag Awesome Sauce. That is my full name. That is my full legal name. Awesome sauce. Awesome sauce. Click OK. And we'll also create a group for us called Two Smart Guides. We need to now update the permissions on the ZFS volume again, and this time we're going to still say that Pox is the owner, but the group is now two smart guys, and we're going to let the group have read, write, and execute. So if my username and password is set correctly to be able to navigate to the free NADs, well, there's our main share, and she now prompt us to enter our username and password. There we go, and we'll We'll say on Pox today. Yay. And ta-da! <laughs> yes. 
And so that's how we can set up anonymous shares or guest shares inside of FreeNAS and more secure shares inside of FreeNAS. That's it. That's the basic setup of FreeNAS 8? Yep. FreeNAS 8.2, in fact. We're working with the beta version, I believe. If it ever hangs up, reboot it. <laughs> yes, if something does not work, uh, there we, we ran into an issue where we would try to set permissions or add a user, and it, it would just say, it would, it would error out, come back to the page and say, you must set these fields for the permissions area for read, write, and uh, execute. And the only way we got around that was just to reboot the machine and go through that process again. <laughs> And luckily, it didn't happen to us while we were going through this process. But <laughs> that is your free NAS box up and running in 15 minutes. All right, so that's the gist of it. It's pretty simple. Um, next week, we're going to get into enabling the plugins, which is actually kind of a weird process. But we'll, we'll get into that next week. See you guys. Please subscribe to the feed um, or here on YouTube, wherever. Thanks. Bye. This has been the Two Smart Guys Productions.